Welcome back. In this video I finished painting the rudder and I start the layout for the carbon rudder stock. For those who are new around here this is a 23 foot trailer yacht based on a sharpie design that I've designed and built the hull out of Polonia core timber. The sail plan is based on my version of the Lungstrom rig. What I've decided to do is sand it down as much as possible um, the other side hasn't been rolled on yet. I'll roll on a thick coat on the other side to work as an undercoat, fill the pinholes, and then I'll have a go at spraying it because <laughs> I'm just not happy with this result and I've broken through in one or two places. Well guys, the sun is quite cruel in showing up any imperfections. That's very heavy paint to be spraying through that gun I was using. I think it's a 1.5mm nozzle I'm using, which is supposed to be the minimum you can use. Getting heaps of overspray because I'm having to push so much air through to drag it out of the pot. And that's with adding 20% reducers, thinners. But it's a much better um, finish than either rolling or brushing which um, to get the most of the marks out, you don't need to get them all out of course, to get most of the marks out with this kind of paint because it's not self-leveling, you have to sand so much of it off. So that's why I was going to give spraying another go. I got on quite a bit of paint, although once again, as you saw, a lot of it was going into the air. I've still got to do the sand down within 24 hours before it gets too hard. 9.8 kgs. Well, you saw last week on my spreadsheet, I estimated 10 kgs, which, um, if I remember correctly, was just a, a guesstimate, really. I might have done the volume on it, maybe, and added a bit more. But um, very happy with that. I was finishing it off with um, wet and dry, but using an orbital sander just takes off this paint so much quicker. It's already quite tough. You can give it quite a bit of sanding and it doesn't take a huge amount off. But it's it's gone from a slightly matte finish to a very smooth finish using 350 wet and um, sandpaper, grit and 320 I think it is. And I'll um, finish it off with wet and dry because there's places I don't want to go near, with, like around the corner there. It'll be really easy to take off too much with an orbital sander. But this does the bulk of it, and I've just got to be very careful and not overdo it. So I don't regret rolling it on in the respect that it's filled all the pinholes. Okay, before I go too far, I'd better explain what I'm up to. I was going to build the rudder box, the rudder stock in aluminium. I was going to cast it. That's where the um, weight of deciding upon all the factors came to. And then it dawned on me, oh, I better not, because... We're in a fire, fire ban season and um, there's a beautiful forest up above me and when I use the furnace, because it, it's wood burning, every now and then you get sparks shooting up. So <clears throat> I think that would be really pushing my luck to um, go down that path, although at one point there I was pretty determined and did some drawings for a aluminium casting. But it turns out I've got enough carbon. Um, just, I think, to build this out of um, carbon fibre, all of it. So it'll be pretty similar to a rudder box I had on my Elliott 7.8. So there'll be a, the first part will be just lay, putting on layers of carbon around here, up to 8 millimetres thick, I think. And then um, there'll be two bands of solid carbon uni, a mixture of uni and cloth. Um, they go around here and along here to for the hinges for the pintles. Once I start this process, it'll be pretty full on, but I may have to stop halfway through if I think things might heat up too much. It's a pretty warm day once again. Rudder box on my LX 7.8 used to get cracks in it. They combined carbon fiber with glass fiber. Sure enough, the predictable thing happened. I've got to cut at least 20 pieces of this cloth, 300 by 350, 
and to get a line in the cloth that makes it parallel and easier most of you probably know of this method where you grab one fiber one strand and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't try and pull a it's amazing you can actually break the carbon fiber with your fingers but try and pull that strand through and then you've got a line to cut to here we go nice line to cut to for the first layer I'm putting in some graphite to help with abrasion resistance these tapes are just a guide for where to place the cloth First layer of 26. It seems to saturate really well. That's the advantage of using thinner layers. Well that went really well. It's um, not quite half the layers and it doesn't seem to be heating it up. So I'll let it go off a bit to see if any heat gets into it. And then before the chemical bond opportunity is lost, I'll get back into it and put the rest of the layers on. This is the last layer. 26 layers. That measure about 0.3 of a millimeter each. So I'm just going to put some peel ply over this now. It's warm, but it's um, doesn't look like it's going to overheat. Thank goodness. So I get to do this part in one day. I, I want this to be 100% wetted out so that I don't have to sand it to put successive um, layers on it. These pieces that go around here. I've got the fan running because it's quite warm. It's um, about seven millimeters thick, and I've done it in two goes. But you'd expect it to warm up a bit. You just don't want it to get into runaway. And I'm quite prepared to rush it outside and pour cold water over it. If that's the case, I don't think it would do any harm. It would certainly slow down the reaction. That went really well yesterday. I'm very happy to say. Let's have a look what it looks like underneath the fuel ply. It gives the appearance of strength. <laughs> um, now the next part is to make these bands which go around here which incorporate the um, bearing bushes and I've been working on the drawing for it all morning to try and finalize what I'm going to do. It with the tiller. <clears throat> so um, it ended up seven millimeters thick um, between quarter of an inch and five sixteenths. That's where it integrates with the tiller. It ended up seven millimeters thick. Oh, it's smooth on the inside. One of the reasons it's not coming off very easily is because I took this. It'll be trimmed back anyway, but I took it past the uh, widest point of the rudder. There we go. Bearing in mind the resin's not um, 24 hours old. Oh, that feels very tough. It's really tempting to put it in my drop saw and cut these ends off. If I've got an old blade I'll do that. How do you make a drill? Drill slightly oversized. Shim one's flute. I tried it on the other one and it worked. It's the first time I've ever done it in general. To be honest, I've struggled with what to do here. How to integrate these bearing bushes that are made out of Dalron or Acetol with the rudder housing. I've thought of so many different ways of doing it and some of them are time consuming. I'm not going to put too much epoxy in there, but I'm going to layer in some epoxy there over the afternoon and um, get it to a point where I can hopefully tomorrow lay some carbon around.
Well, I'm going to end this video here today. Um, the rudder stock is progressing, as you can see. I've just put these plastic strips around to form where the tape will run over, the uni tape mostly, um, to strengthen it all up and hold the um, bearing bushings. The epoxy I've used in here is thickened with um, glue fibre. So it's under compression, so it's, it's not a um, big ask. I was going to use timber in there. If a crack did form and a bit of water got into the timber in there, it wouldn't be a good thing to deal with. The fairing on the boat is going well. I've done the decks. I've pretty much done the transom. I've started on the bulkhead in the forward end of the cockpit and the cabin sides I've skimmed those. Trickiest and longest area will probably be, will be the cabin top. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week.